All right, let's uh, let's let's check. Let me check on my um, on the Facebook. Yeah, we live yet? Oh yeah, we're live now. All right, let's uh, let's let me share on my um. Just give me a sec. Let me share it. All right, done. Good uh, um, good afternoon to my Aussie friends and uh, good evening and good morning wherever you are. So today um, we have a good friend of mine, Judy Andrews. She's going to share some fantastic tips on how to take photos for newborn babies, um, both indoors or on location. Uh, a little bit about her, she's, um, she's three times Australian you know, photographer of, uh, of the year in the row. And she's also been in, she's also been everywhere in the, you know, Sony even Sony annual events. Also, she has been on channel seven, sharing her tips with uh, children photography. So can't wait. And uh, I'll um, can't wait for the presentation and leave Jojo to talk about um, <laughs> Thanks, her, her information. <laughs> All right, so we'll get straight into it, I suppose. Um, is the, have you got the slides up? Oh, yeah, I'll bring that up. Thank you. Right. Awesome. So I am a uh, newborn maternity and family photographer. Um, I thought I'd just show you a little career snapshot of things that I've done over the the year since I began photography. Uh, I began in 2009. Um, I had a love of newborn photography and so I just, uh, I'll go into how I got into it further along, but uh, I started um, photographing newborns and then I never felt that I was, um, because I hadn't didn't have an official degree, I didn't feel that I was good enough um, and so I started entering competitions to sort of even though I had a very busy business, um, I still wanted to be respected by my peers and make sure that I was doing everything correctly. Um, so I started entering competitions. Um, I started entering in 2013 um, and I didn't do very well that year. Uh, I went back and reassessed all the things that I was doing. Um, so even though you had a thriving business, so I didn't um, stack up award-wise. Uh, so then I uh, went back and reassessed all the things that I was doing in my work and started to relook at everything. And 2014, I ended up becoming a finalist for the family category and the creative category in the New South Wales State Awards. Um, and then flash forward, 2017, 2018 and 2019, I became the Australian Newborn Photographer of the Year. Um, and since then, I've become a judge for international competitions, um, an international educator and um, an expert educator for Sony Australia. So there's lots of been happening there. I've had some uh, TV appearances and uh, guest speaking for Asia WPA. Um, yeah, so lots has sort of transpired over the years. Um, go to the next slide. So how did it all start? Well, I was on a um, music scholarship at boarding school and I always had a love for photography. Um, I had that signed up from my year 11 and 12 electives and my parents decided to pull me out uh, in year 11 um, and send me off to business college. And I was absolutely devastated because I had photography lined up for my year 11, 12 electives. Um, and so come, you know, I had kids and whatnot and started my career. And, um, then I ended up, uh, saw a friend was a new form of photographer and I reached out to her and she mentored me through the process of becoming a newborn photographer. Um, and it just sort of transpired from there. I was really lucky because when I moved to the Central Coast, I just started my career and it just um, exploded. There was only about three newborn photographers here on the coast and I just, I was inundated with work. My name became very popular. I couldn't go anywhere without anyone knowing my name. Like they're just like, oh my God, you're the, the Jodie Andrews. It was quite, got a bit embarrassing at one point. But um, that's because there was no other people doing what I was doing in my area. Um, so I guess 
that's that's how it all sort of started. And I've worked my butt off ever since. And um, now I've got a thriving business and um, keeps me very comfortable in life. So, so um, you're a complete beginner and where do you start and what recommendations do you have? Let me just get my notes. <laughs> okay, so I guess you need to get lighting equipment. That's the first thing that you need uh, and a camera. So get a camera, um, basic equipment, start looking at the way that light falls on subjects, um, get yourself a like a doll, it's just a cheap doll. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. Um, and practice your wrapping. Um, and the more that you practice those techniques, you will get better and better at it. Look at the way that light's falling on the baby's face and that sort of, um, yeah, that's, you just, it's just practice really. Um, before you even think about bringing, um, clients into your space you need to understand newborn safety so babies can't be left unattended you can't turn your back on them um, you should always be within arm reach of them um, or have someone in arm's reach of them um, it's really really important i've seen time and time again that so many people just sort of forget that babies can move really really quickly out of a position so that's the probably the most important thing is baby safety you want to also make sure that um, you're not doing things before you're ready to do it. So start with very, very basic wrapped poses and then get that right and then move on to the next. So um, it takes time. You're not going to pick it up immediately. Babies can be, you can have a really great baby and then you can have a really shocking baby. So even now I still get them. So it's it's just part and parcel and it's just being very, very patient um with um and it just your your demeanor also i think comes out in the sessions a little bit so if you're relaxed the baby's relaxed um and yeah just um just keep on keep on practicing make sure you're getting it right then maybe invite friends and families babies have a practice with those um, again starting very very simple poses and just building on those poses and making sure you're getting them right. There's plenty of Facebook groups out there as well that you can jump on. Ask other photographers what they think, feedback of your images. Um, and, yeah, just just keep on practising. There's plenty of photographers out there that is is um, able to, to give you advice. Reach out to me if you want to. Um, I'm happy to help. I um, can be a bit busy, but I will reply to everyone. Um, so, yeah, just just keep on keep on trying so all right so now that you've got basis someone's contacted you and said i want to have a photo shoot now the biggest thing that i learned when my parents pulled me out of school and i went off to business college i learned that most of our our photography side is running a business it's not actually shooting so you need to make sure you have the correct systems in place to be able to um, manage that business because like I said before my business suddenly took off overnight and I didn't have the tools to manage it in place it took a while and uh, now my my um, systems is a well-oiled machine so I have a, a client management software that basically handles all my bookings for me automatically uh, it sends out quotes to clients based on the questions that they ask me I don't do anything um, and then it it has this workflow through it so I've set all of those up in in the background so based on all those questions it, it'll send them specific emails um, as part of that uh, you have it, it sends them a questionnaire asking them about their session and um, they so we might ask them the color choices that they like how many people are coming to the session the names and ages of every child that's coming to the session um, they so I am completely prepared. When they turn up at my front door, I know exactly who's coming and what ages and I've got everything set up and ready to go. I don't want any surprises. <laughs> so um, then they, they come into the studio and we photograph the session. Um, and then on the same day, we actually um, go through and they choose their images at the same session uh, straight afterwards. 
Now, the reason that I do that is because I have had many an image stolen over the years and I I just I don't want my images stolen. So we we and but not only that, we also um, are able to do things a lot quicker. So by choosing them, I think I saved like a week or something by by choosing having the clients choose on the day. So you don't need any particular software to do it. I just use Lightroom and we just bring it all up on the screen and they go through and select. Now, the the best part about um, being able to do that is all my camera, all my lights. Look, sorry, start that again. Because I use good lighting, my um, my photos look good straight out of camera. So I don't edit anything before they see it. I let them choose it exactly as it is, and I only edit what they choose. And that really does come to come down to good lighting and consistent lighting. Um, it's not changing all the time. So um, a lot of natural light photographers have to adjust things beforehand. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's just easier for me to do that. Um, and then I, after that, I, so the sneak peek that usually goes up on my Facebook page is... Um, 99% of the time, one of the images that the clients have chosen. Um, and so, again, I'm not wasting time editing something that's not purchased. We also have our own printing equipment, so I print everything um, in-house, and that also uh, makes it a little bit more efficient as well. So, yeah. All right, next. Um, so the basic equipment that you need to start just in general. So I use a Sony a7R III and yes, I am due for an upgrade, <laughs> um, but um, it's doing the job. So, and I also use a 50 millimeter and a 70 to 200. They, I just use them for everything. So um, the choice of light will depend on whatever you're doing on the day. Um, and I usually use a light meter as well to just make sure I'm getting everything correctly. Um, okay, so for so that was just an overall specific like um, equipment list for newborn photography. Um, I have a variety of props, and it can become rather addictive in the things that you have to buy all the time because there's so many pretty things out there for newborn sessions. Uh, but the basics that you need uh, is stretchy wraps. Now, these are, see how stretchy, it stretches, this one stretches both ways. And it's quite, it's quite long, probably um, maybe two metres in length. Um, so that's my sort of base wrap that I would start the newborn sessions with. And then I might use a pretty wrap over the top of that. So this is like a fluffy, fluffy wrap. It's not quite as stretchy, but there is a little bit of stretch, stretch in it. So I can get things nice and tight. Um, you, you probably need a bean bag. Um, I mean, you could use a bed if you wanted to. You could use a dog's bed as well. They're quite popular. But something that is ideal that you can stretch the blankets around and clamp them off. Um, but if you were desperate, you could use a bed um, and then clamp it to a, like a doona cover underneath if you needed to. Um, I often use cloth nappies, so just the terry toweling diapers. Um, and they're good for, I'm a bit old school, I use them for posing underneath babies, um, but also cleaning up like any wheeze and poos and vomits and all that sort of stuff. Um, and also posing, put it, posing beans. These come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, I'm not partial to any particular um, person who sells them, but they're usually pretty good. I like it fairly firm so that it doesn't sink uh, when you pose the baby on it. Um, you need a backdrop some backdrops or if you've got nice floors or something like that you can use that just fabric from uh your local fabric store will, will be fine or there's plenty of suppliers that you can get printed backdrops from uh we have a big printer so i just 
design my own backdrops and print them off uh, on poly paper. Uh, for newborn sessions, I generally use a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter lens, um, but it just, I chop and change a bit, so I can't commit to one, but I generally use the 50. Am I doing okay, Aries? <laughs> doing great. Hopefully I'm not just um, giving you too much information there. <laughs> okay. Um, so maternity sessions and family sessions. I generally will take along um, a blanket for them to sit on. Um, that is so, like, if you've got a child that doesn't like sitting um, on the ground or the grass, it might be sent, um some kids can be a bit funny about that sort of stuff. Um, they're a bit sensitive. Um, or, you know, there maybe there's some insects in the ground that you haven't seen. Laying a little um, blanket on the ground for them to sit on um, is usually good. That blanket can also be used to wrap around the client um, for, for posing, or it can be used just to keep them warm whilst if the weather changes whilst you're there. Um, I typically use a 70 to 200 um lens when i'm photographing outdoors it's my favorite um but if i'm in studio i'll use a 50 millimeter um and i generally take along probably three maternity gown choices uh, as well so all right so there's quite a few um godox lights out there and you're not sure which one to choose so I'm just going to run through a couple of them so we can sort of go through them. So the AD200, AD100 Pro and the V1, um, they're all great lights. They're very compact. They're easy to take out and you can get the, the pop-up soft boxes as well. So and a little light stand and they're your best friend and you can go out into location. I find that these work really well in... Um, in shady, more shady sort of locations, not full sunlight. Um, I typically don't shoot in full sunlight, but I've actually created a couple of videos which shows you um, how much sun is actually coming onto the baby in the next video anyway. Um, but yes, they're great in terms of if you're photographing a wedding or anything like that as well, and you just want to just duck out into location and it's quite shady, you can just put a bit of light in there. Okay, so have you got the video there, Aries? Yes. Okay, so just before we do, so this is a... Um, you want me to play the video first? Not yet, just okay. a second. Um, so this is a AD200 Pro. Um, it, we were in partial shade. The, we, we were meant to be in full shade, but the client turned up late. So it kind of... Uh, a bit of spin in the works but we um kept photographing and it was fine as you can see by the photos um but it just gives you an example of you can see the lighting position as to where the baby is and you can see how much sun is actually falling onto the baby as well so you can hit play aries yep can i play now yep okay So it's only very short, but it gives you an idea of where the light position was and how much was there. Okay, we'll go back to the slide. Okay, so the next one is the AD200 Pro. Using a tree, so it's 11 o'clock in the, in the morning um, and just using the canopy shade um, for this. Now this also, actually, no, see you play, Aries. Um. While you're speaking, there's a question from Thea. Yep. I think it's a Easy perfect time. question when we discuss about 8200, right? Because it comes with yep. both both heads. Yeah. The fresh yep. and Yeah. So um, I didn't have a, um, a scrim on that either in those videos, actually, in all the three that's there. Um, it depends on the situation, I suppose. Um, I don't mind shooting bare bowl. Um, I will do whatever I need to do um, to, to get the shot. So if, I, if it's not working for me, then I'll just change over to bare bowl. Hmm. 
I um, personally, I will go for. I always go for bare bulb because um, if it's Fresnel, it's always designed for small body fires. Does it make sense? Um, yeah. it, the light is almost designed to go forward uh, with a certain direction, rather than like a bare bulb. It goes almost like hundred degree kind yeah. of semi sphere. Um, so theoretically, the uh, you will have some hot spots in the softbox with a Fresnel. And with bare bulb, you wouldn't have such issue. That's um, um, my personal opinion, though. Yeah. Just full disclaimer: I'm not a technical photographer either. So. <laughs> no, I've just been answering too many of those kind of questions. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, Taya didn't say what the purpose is for, so I wouldn't. Yeah. Be, you know, and how many diffusion are you using, right? If you are yeah. use only one layer of diffusion with a softbox. Uh, like lots of photographers do outdoors, uh, you will almost certainly have a, you know, have a hot spot. But if you only do, you know, if you have your stable diffusion, even in theory, you will have a hot spot. In, pra in practice, not so much. So yeah. it really depends, isn't that? It? It's just, it's not only about the, the, um, it, the softbox and the light, it's also about how you use the softbox too, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to the next one. Okay, so we'll hit play on this video. This one's a little bit longer, um, but you can sort of see me posing. Um, so it's quite a warm day as well. So in the, in the <laughs> this is my new property as well so yeah. starting to get used to it um sure. i didn't have the space to shoot outside before which is this is nice mm -hmm. um so in the front of that bucket i've actually got multiple of the the cloth nappies these things just all rolled up like snakes and then just built up in the front i probably needed one more in there but i still made it work um that didn't finish that video. oh sorry that didn't finish no oh sorry that's all right oh yeah so baby still had her nappy on as well and still wrapped up I try to keep the nappy on a few, like as much as possible these days, to be honest. <laughs> Can be a very messy job. So I'm just pulling the stuffing out to make sure I'm getting it underneath her elbows. you'll see that I actually put my thumb in sort of underneath her sort of put it in like that underneath the face to try and keep her face from pulling down um, fixing fingers good afternoon Kojima-san uh, I'll have some friends here <laughs> And I've constantly got my hand on her. See, as I look away, I've still got my hand on her to make sure that she's secure. She's not going to jump. I'm within arm's reach of her at all times. 
and the mum was just off to the side as well. I'm humming at her to try and calm her down because she was a little bit fussy. And I'm just fixing little fingers. That's it. We'll go to the next one. Uh, so this is the same day, but in the afternoon and a different location. Um, I happened to have wildflowers on that afternoon and the baby was pretty good in the morning. So I said to them, why don't you come down and meet me uh, and we'll try and get some open shade shots for them. So we've just got one. It's very quick, but it does show you in the video me wrapping. So I thought that might be helpful and it'll show you very quickly at the end my lighting position for this photo. So I was doing this very, very quickly <laughs> because it was so, it would turned really cold. So I left baby like fully dressed and just wrapped over the top. <laughs> That's mum coughing, by the way. Just wrapping around the baby pulling it sort of down the back to try and secure the bubs in. And I'm leaving, making sure that the hands are sort of here and there's a gap so that the fabric's not too tight and it's not cutting off circulation. Working with babies outdoors is um, not easy. They, I definitely prefer it inside the studio. <laughs> so it's definitely the adding wind and the elements is definitely adds a um, extra challenge to it. But I do enjoy them in the soul. So just wrapping a prettier layer over the top. So the first one was like that real stretchy fabric. And then this is just a scarf that I've got in those yellow sort of tones. grizzling because it's windy. <laughs> dad standing on the other side of that bucket i don't know if you can see it in the shot we we didn't get a lot of footage but just above my um arm uh can you see my cursor moving aries no i can't oh, okay um just above my arm there is actually a um the soft box so it's similar position to what we were doing earlier but i thought the wrapping side would give you an idea of how i wrap all right now, uh, so I really like, there's a new trend that's going around and um, I'm nervous to join the bandwagon, but I'm, I am interested. I do really like photos, um, but it's this boho sort of style. As you can see, I've set up my bed in the background and whatnot um, where I can pose clients on. Um, and so we, I've, 
I've just recently moved and we've moved out to acreage. We've got 12 beautiful acres. And um, it, I've got this lovely studio space, but it's slightly different to what I previously had. And uh, so I've got, I went to Godox and I said, what have you got that I can create a light wall with? Um, hi. <laughs> and um, we, so I went to them and asked them and they suggested the FL 150R, which is a flexible light. And I figured that if I got a couple of pen, um, uh, a couple of these panels so at least i've got four of them um i've got three working at the moment i've i've actually misplaced it in the move um one of the panels um so i've got sorry the power packs but three seems to be working quite well for me and um i've set up a bed and the this window which i'm going to show you in a minute um to to create this boho sort of look now the advantage of that is that um I'd previously tried, uh, there's like an LED light panel, you get the ceiling lights and you attach them to um, these fluorescent or ceiling lights that you attach to this timber stand. Um, but I found that it was quite cumbersome. Um, there's only 30 watts of power per panel, so it wasn't overly strong. Um, and, yeah, I just found it really cumbersome. It wasn't going to work in my new studio. So... I got these and um, I'm really, really happy with it. I'm very excited. Um, let me just, I'll go to the next slide. So this is how I've set it up in my studio. So they're, because they're so lightweight, I've just literally got Velcro um, behind the panels, just a little bit of strong Velcro. Um, and the, uh, I don't know if you can see them, but where, where the curtain rod goes through, there's clips you can get from Bunnings or a hardware store, and you, they, they're also just stuck on the wall, and then I can just pop in my um, curtain rod. So nothing's actually screwed in. It's very DIY, easy <laughs> to use. And uh, what I like is that I can just use my remote and just turn them all on at one time. Uh, so I've just turned it on then, and or I can just turn them all off. So um, I can also control my colour balance as well so I can make it warmer or cooler with them. Um, but I'm really, really excited about these. They're, they're fantastic. So I, the three is working for me. I'd love to find my actual other power pack and get the fourth one going. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So if anyone's looking for, if they've got no space and a dark studio um, that they want to create something like this for, I'd highly recommend um getting the FL150. Ah, yeah. All right, we'll go next. So the FV150. Um, sorry, there was a question that popped up before. What was that, Aries, about flash? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So I will go into that question. Uh, so the so FV150 is a continuous light. There's no flash. It's really great for um, parents not having to see, like I suffer with migraines, so having a continuous flash um, going in the background is uh, like my sessions are three hours long. So having a flash going off continuously for three hours would be really, really annoying. Um, so look, there's a time and place for everything, but I love my continuous light. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm anti-flash. I will use flash. Um, it just depends on the circumstances. If there's a heap of um, people, um, like a lots, lots of people attending, I might use change it over to be a flash because um, it's not quite as much power in the continuous light. But um, yeah, I for newborn photography, I really love the the 150 or the FV200, either either or. Um, and yeah, well, hopefully that. That answers that um, but it's also great for um, people who are natural light photographers and they're just starting to get used to sort of making that transition to studio lighting um, because they can actually see where the light's falling really easily um, yeah. what, do you, what you see is what you get 
All right, uh, so the AD600 Pro, um, I've also got that. I uh, started with that one actually before I used the continuous lights, but I thought I'd just touch on it really quickly. Um, it's a all battery operated, it's very portable, it's light, you can take it outside, um, and it's great for, for fast moving toddlers. Um, so Christmas sessions where I, I'm in a hurry and I've got lots of kids running around and I don't know how many people are coming in uh, let's say I might have one family might be two people and the next family might be six. So I'm just going to use my 8600 Pro for that. Um, and, yeah, so if I've got a child that is not cooperating, <laughs> um, I might use the trigger on the camera just to get them to um, engage with me. So I'll, let's make it like a game. So I get them to push the trigger on the camera, it flashes, and I'm like, okay, my turn, and then I have a go. Um, and that's when I get that shot. And then I'll go back and let them have another turn. So it's a reward system So and, and sharing. Um, so it kind of be a little bit fun. <laughs> so. All right. So next we've got a couple of little videos of just my lighting placement um, in terms of positions. So most of my beanbag shots, it's set up the same way. So the light's slightly angled in um, towards the baby. It's not directly parallel. All right. We'll go to the next one. Next video or next PBT? Uh, we can go to the well, next slide and then we'll, we'll go to the next video. Okay. And baby on their back. Yep, next video. So with the posing doll, it doesn't turn its head quite the same way, but that's basically the angle that I would have, might tilt it more, um, coming down the baby a little bit, little bit more, um, if depending on where the head, head is. So you've just got to start watching your lighting and adjust accordingly. Um, the most important thing is that you're not shooting the light up the baby's nose, uh, which is like getting a torch and shining it underneath your nose. It's not very flattering. Um, and often, even with the boho setup, they face the baby towards the light in the arm, um, sort of this way, um, towards the light, and you can see up the baby's nose, whereas try and change the baby's position so it's more upright and still have it on that side, um, or turn the head the other direction and just open it up a little more towards the light. Does that make sense, Aries? <laughs> that sounds like makes sense to me. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully everyone else. I'm speed talking. <laughs> All right, uh, so next one. All right, so I, I guess it's, uh, yeah. Powerful thing on. Yes. Um, for newborn photography, I'm only really sure it's like shooting one to two subjects, maybe three. Um, it's not a problem. Mm. And I don't uh, use high ISOs or anything like that. It's all really rather low. Uh, So the only only issue would be if you're in a very bright room, um, if you have a lot of light that comes into your studio, um, you might have a bit of an issue there. But um, I'd probably use the AD600 Pro for that. But if it's a fairly sort of darkish room, it's not an not an issue. Blinds and curtains. <laughs> I guess normal home you can easily overpower the yeah, um, that's right the indoor lights by just using the LED. Yeah, unless yes. natural light comes in, you can always close your curtain. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we'll play the next one. So it's just sort of feathering across, across the baby in that shot. And so, yeah, um, and I have that, I use that same position if I was doing any sitting uh, sitting sessions um, or cake smash sessions. It's typically that, that angle that I would use. Okay, so 
um, I guess the key to running a uh, an easy newborn session, um, make sure that the baby is uh, well fed uh, when they arrive. Um, so as soon as, as soon as they come in, make sure you ask them whether they like when were they last fed because that gives you an idea of roughly your time frame of when you're going to need to to stop and feed again. Um, if you're getting pretty close to a feeding time. I'd suggest that they feed the baby first. Um, and then what we do is we start with uh, wrapped poses first. Um, and how I, how I also um, lay my studio out is I set all my props out. So I, I'm all ready to go as soon as they arrive in. Um, and we, I just move from one to the next to the next, to the next. I'm not stopping and setting things up. Um, I've got enough space to be able to do that. Um, otherwise, you can have all your props all set up in the corner that it, it, um, and just pull them out individually. But make sure you've got everything that matches, your headband matches all your props that you've got, have it all there ready to go so you're not wasting time um, looking for things. I think also if you start pulling things out of the, the cupboard, um, the client's like, oh, I really like that blanket. Can I use that blanket? Um, and then you've got to find a whole new setup and new headband to match. And like, it, it, it takes time to set all these things up. So I, I spend about an hour or so before the, the client arrives getting everything ready to go. So when they arrive, it's, it's ready. Um, I start with wrapped poses um, and I might do three prop shops that are the wrapped. Uh, and I gradually am taking off layers um, of the, the wrapping. So I, I, I wrap the first stretcher wrap, then I might wrap the second stretcher wrap, um, and then I'll eventually un, unwrap as I go. So the baby's nice and sleepy by the time I get to the beanbag poses. Um, before I hit the beanbag pose, depending on how that baby's going, I might do the toddler, like toddler session depending on that toddler if it's engaged and interested um it's only going to be interested for a little bit of time so i will try and get that shot then um if the child isn't quite um keen yet and still warming up um i might move on to beanbag poses and then come back to the child shot uh, you just got to keep in mind that often the kids are two years old and they're going to want to have a nap during the day and they're going to get whingy. So you're probably better off if the moment that they're engaged and they're cooperative, try and get that shot. Um, and then, yeah, do beanbag poses and then I will come back and do the family poses at the end. And the baby can be unwrapped or wrapped for those. I'm not worried. Um, if the baby doesn't matter. The parents them. loved it anyway. That's exactly right. So yeah. it's just about getting that shot. All right. Uh, the slide's going to be funny, but um, yeah. So newborn sessions generally go for three hours. Um, some might be two hours. Some might. Oh, generally it's three. It's not usually longer than three. Um, and then we select the images afterwards. Probably about fifteen minutes of, of selecting images. Um, sitter sessions generally go for 20 minutes. Um, babies at that age for sitter session and cake smash sessions, um, you've got very limited time before they lose interest. So we get in, get it done as quickly as possible. Um, and I probably overshoot a little bit because um, I think the parents sometimes think, oh, that's gone so quickly compared to my newborn session. Um, but it's just what it is it's and I just try and get as many variety as I can before they um lose interest and then we go through and we choose all the photos um maternity sessions are 30 to 45 minutes um I like the parents to feel very comfortable when they come into the session um you know often with maternity you're asking them to strip down to almost nothing um and sometimes it's a little bit nice to just give them that time to feel comfortable with you. Uh, a lot of the times they haven't been photographed before and so they just need that warm up time. So 30 to 45 minutes is generally, I find, gives a little bit of time to sort of get them used to it and then we just keep taking <laughs> items off and changing outfits and whatnot. So, um, and it helps me gauge how comfortable they are by their reactions as well. Um, often I will also ask 
on that note, um, parents to for maternity sessions, if they've seen examples of things that they like, um, other other photographers' images and my images, it doesn't matter, uh, to send me through what they might like because it get gauges, uh, it shows me what type of photography they're, they're interested in. Um, yeah. And what else? Uh, family sunset sh- sessions, I usually start one hour prior to sunset. Um, it's probably only 45 minutes, but it gives me a little bit of time just in case they're late with the traffic. Oh, that's better. I can actually read my writing. <laughs> um, if they're, they're, they're late with uh, traffic, um, you know, I can't I can't stop the sun from setting. So I try and say an hour and, um, yeah, 35, 30 to 45 minutes and we, we're all finished. Um, yeah. Very efficient. I, I feel like I've just talked, like, so much. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I have just... Uh, given too much information all in one hit very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so I think we have already pretty much answered all the questions during the session because most of the yep. questions are very tightly relevant with the slides. So, guys, yep. if you uh, just follow Jody um, on her Instagram, that will be Jody Andrews Photography, right? Yep. Just follow her on her Instagram if you have any question or DM her, like, you know, uh, she will get back to it. She's quite busy, obviously, during the day as a full-time newborn photographer, but she will get back to you whenever she's back to her computer. If there's yeah. no more question, um, thank you so much. And uh, this is Aristotle. I will see you guys um, in the next broadcast. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.